All right, we come to the very last section in topic 10, which is quantitative analysis. Now there's actually several quantitative analysis techniques, but we're only gonna zero in on one of them, and that's the titration analysis. Um, unfortunately, the titration was one of the labs you were going to do in the lab, and that helps to understand what's going on, but because of the situation, you're only able to do the titration lab via video. But in this section, we are going to look at titrations in two manners. The first way is we're just gonna simply talk about what a titration is. And then the second part is we're gonna look at the math behind it. The good news is the math is actually math you already know. It's basic, it's stoichiometry. That's all it is. We're gonna spend some more time talking about what a titration actually is so you can understand how you would actually perform a titration when you were in the lab. So let's talk a little bit about what a titration is. A titration is a process where you have a solution that you know the concentration for, and you're adding it gradually to another solution where you don't, you typically don't know the concentration for. So there's a known, and then there's an unknown. The known concentration has a special name. We call that the titrant, and then the uh, solution that we do not know the concentration for, or the unknown that we're solving for, that's going to be called the analyte because we're analyzing it. So essentially, you are taking two substances and you are reacting them together, and that is what a titration is. Now, a lot of times, the type, the two things that you're reacting together, and what we're going to look at specifically, is a lot of times you are doing an acid-base titration. So you're reacting an acid with a base. Okay, uh, not all the time, but most of the time, that's what you're doing. Uh, how do you know when the reaction is done? That's the key thing, right? You're adding one thing to another and you're adding these solutions until the reaction is complete. How do you know when the reaction is complete? Well, there's the theoretical definition and then there's the actual definition of what you would be looking for in the lab. The theoretical definition is you'll know the reaction is complete when you have reached the equivalence point. And the equivalence point is defined as when the number of moles of hydrogen equals the number of moles of hydroxide, okay? So I wanna actually demonstrate this or show this off to the side. Let's say, okay, let's say you had a flask and I'm gonna to try to draw this kind of big so we can see it, okay? And let's say your flask, okay, had HCl, okay, it had hydrochloric acid. So what that means is you're gonna have some hydrogen ions in there with some chlorine ions. Okay, and I'm only gonna draw a few, all right? This is your hydrochloric acid solution. And now what we're gonna to add to it, okay, what we're gonna, oh God, that's terrible. That's not a straight line at all. I'm gonna to attempt to draw a straight line. Okay, it can be kind of difficult here. And what we're gonna to add to it, uh, that's a little better, that's my burette. Don't judge my drawing skills. <laughs> uh, what's in the burette is sodium hydroxide, okay? And that's aqueous as well. Now, what sodium hydroxide is, remember, is it's sodium ions and hydroxide ions. So, when you, so the hydroxide is the important part here, and the hydrogen part is the important part here, okay? So the hydrochloric acid is the acid, it produces hydrogen ions. The sodium hydroxide is the base, it produces uh, hydroxide ions. Now, we, are want, we want to add sodium hydroxide until the number of moles of hydrogen ions equals the number of moles of hydroxide ions. When they are equal, that is the equivalence point. Now, there's no way for us to tell in the lab that that equals just by simply looking at it, right? Like we can't see H plus, we can't see OH minus, we just see solutions. There has to be a way for us to figure out when the equivalence point is has been reached. So what we do is we add an indicator. It's a, it's a solution of, it's a chemical that will turn certain colors um, depending on if it's acidic or basic. There's a lot of different indicators out there one indicator that we use a lot is an indicator known as phenolphthalein. Um, you don't have to worry about memorizing that right now, but phenolphthalein is an indicator. And when you add that indicator into the solution, okay, phenolphthalein is going to be colorless when the solution is acidic, 
but it's going to turn pink when the solution is basic. And so if I were to add indicator into this flask right here, which is acidic, what color would we expect it to be? We'd expect it to be colorless. Now, if I were to start adding sodium hydroxide from the burette into this flask, what we would start to see is we would start to see right here, and actually I'm going to even use pink, right here, okay, it would start to turn pink. The reason why is because the indicator here senses that there is hydroxide, right? So if I were to add, let's just say, a little bit of sodium hydroxide, what would now be in this flask? There would be the sodium and there would be the hydroxide. And the presence of hydroxide here is what causes there to be a temporary pink color because the indicator is sensing that there is, there's basic uh, components, there's hydroxide. But what ends up happening is this hydrox or this hydrogen and this hydroxide end up reacting. And what do you think they're going to create when hydrogen and hydroxide react together? What they end up creating is water. So that hydrogen and that hydroxide react to produce water. And as a result, what would happen to this pink? It would go away. Okay, the pink color disappears because is there any is there any hydroxide left? No, there is not. Now, this solution, is it still acidic? Yes, because you see there's still an abundance of hydrogen ions that have not fully reacted. So we would want to add some more sodium hydroxide. So let's say I do that. I add more sodium hydroxide. So I could represent that by Na and then OH. Now, there's OH here. So what is the indicator going to do? It's going to sense that there's hydroxide there and it's going to turn slightly pink temporarily. But we know that what's going to happen, that hydroxide and that hydrogen are going to react together. And as they react, what is the product of that? The product of that is H2O. And what would happen to the indicator? The indicator would go back to being colorless because the indicator does no, it no longer senses that there's hydroxide. So right now, this solution is colorless because there's no hydroxide left. Now, right here, as, I've had, as I have it drawn, this represents the equivalence point. Why? Because there's no longer any excess hydrogen or hydroxide, meaning that those, the number of ions for hydrogen and hydroxide are equal. This is the equivalence point. But think about it. If you were in the lab doing this, would you stop adding sodium hydroxide at this point? No, because what color is this? It's still colorless. You may be thinking there could still be some hydrogen ions in there. You don't know. So this is where you want to start slowing down if you were in the lab doing this. And you want to add like a little bit, almost like one drop at a time. If I were to add just one more drop of sodium hydroxide, what would this flask look like? Well, you would have the sodium, and I'm running out of space here, I'm sorry. You'd add a sodium ion in there, and you would have a hydroxide ion in there. Now think about this. Are there any hydrogen ions left to react with this hydroxide? No, there's not. And so what ends up happening is, because there's hydroxide in here, the solution turns pink. But there's no longer any hydrogen ions to neutralize it and turn it into water. So what ends up happening is the whole solution turns and stays pink. And it's at this point, you as the experimenter know, stop. Stop the reaction. Do not add any more sodium hydroxide. The reaction is done. You've now reached what's called the end point. The end point is defined as the color change that visually indicates that the reaction is complete. Now, now, is the end point the same thing as the equivalence point? No, because think about it. When did we reach the equivalence point? It was before I added that last drop, right? The equivalence point was when the hydrogen and the hydroxide were equal. The end point happened when I added that little bit of sodium hydroxide that caused there to be an excess and therefore to cause a permanent color change. That's what the end point is. So make sure you know the difference between that. Well, what does all this look like? This is actually an example of what this lab would look like. So down here you have your starting solution. 
Notice it's colorless. So would colorless mean it's acidic or basic? In this particular example, phenolphthalein is colorless when it's acidic. Now when I start adding base, notice you see that little bit of pink that starts to show up? Why is it turning pink? Because for a moment there's some hydroxide that's unreacted, but it'll go back to being colorless when the hydrogen fully reacts with it. It's when the solution turns and stays pink. This is when you know you've reached your end point and the reaction is complete. You wouldn't want to add any more sodium hydroxide or any more base. If you do, you're then just adding more excess reactant and that will throw off your numbers. So you want to make sure you avoid that. Okay, um, right here, this is just a graphical representation of what happens to the pH when you start adding base. So notice at the beginning, before you've added any base, your pH is very low, and that's because, you know, it's still acidic. When you start adding your base, notice the pH starts rising, but it actually rises pretty slowly. But notice, once you reach your equivalence point, it actually drastically shoots up in pH and then starts leveling off again. That's like one drop can make the difference between going from a, a low pH to a high pH. In other words, from acidic to basic. So when you get close to the color change, you want to start going slow. So in the lab, this is where I would tell students, when you start to see that pink color start to show up and stay a little bit longer, you're starting to get close to your end point. Go slower. And so maybe that's when you would go drop by drop because one drop can actually make it go from acidic all the way up to basic. Okay, um, we're going to end this video by just doing one example uh, to make sure we understand theoretically what happens in a titration. And then in the next video, we're going to look at the math. So example 12, you're adding NaOH to HCl according to the following equation. So you're reacting a base with an acid. Specifically, I've told you what base and what acid respectively. What would the beaker drawings look like at the equivalence point and at the end point? So I really want to make sure you understand the difference between the equivalence point and the end point. The equivalence point is where your moles of hydrogen and your moles of hydroxide are exactly equal. So what that means is your hydrogens and your hydroxides have fully reacted to produce water and you have your NaCl, which are your spectator ions, and that's it. There is no excess hydrogen ion. There is no excess hydroxide ion. So if I were to draw the equivalence point, I would just simply draw these two products over here. I would draw water, H2O, and then I would draw Na plus and Cl minus. So water is what you produce as a result of all the hydrogens neutralizing all the hydroxides. And then the NaCl is just simply the spectator ions that are still just left over. That's the equivalence point. The end point means you have a little bit extra of whatever it is you were adding to the beaker. In other words, you have an excess reactant. So the end point, you still have created water. You've still created the NaCl. So that's still the same as over here. But in addition, you also have that one little drop that you've added over that produced the color change. In this problem, it says you're adding the NaOH to the HCl. So what that means is you've added maybe one extra drop of NaOH. So NaOH is your excess reactant. So what I would do is I would draw that in here as Na plus and OH minus. That represents the excess reactant, that extra one drop that I added, meaning that this OH is now in excess and that turns the beaker the whole pink color, if that makes sense. All right, that video was going in depth about what a titration was. I encourage you to maybe do a little bit more research on a titration. You can just look up a quick YouTube video or look at the textbook, but that video explains what a titration is from a theory standpoint. The next video, we're going to just look at the math.